All right, welcome back to Sportsline. Once again, the Titans take on the Minnesota Vikings Thursday night at Nissan Stadium in their final preseason game. And here to help us break it all down, good friend of the show, but he's got a new gig now. Our buddy Jimmy Wyatt from TitansOnline.com. Jimmy, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. How you doing, JB? I'm doing great. This is the first time I've had a chance to uh, chat with you here on Sportsline uh, since you made the switch from the Tennessee and over to the Titans website, Titans Online, doing some great things on there. Read your stuff all the time. Congratulations, first of all. And second of all, what's the, uh, what's the move been like for you? I've enjoyed it. Yes, it's a situation I wasn't really looking to leave the Tennessee, and I enjoyed working down there. I worked down there since I got out of college. And it's certainly, you know, Tennessee has a special place in my heart and always will. But, you know, an opportunity came along, um, I guess, right before training camp started, just a couple of weeks before training camp started. And I, I started hearing more about it and what the job might entail. And uh, and it sounded pretty good to me, to be honest with you. So I enjoy, I've enjoyed it. You know, I've really enjoyed doing it here the last month. Hope it's something I can do, finish out my career doing, and uh, it's been good. Yeah, I'm, I feel very fortunate. Well, they're fortunate to have you, Jimmy. You know, I think the world of you. So, congratulations on that. All right, let's 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 start with Marcus Mariota. Uh, Ken Wisnot today at his press conference reiterated what he said a couple of days ago that he flat out just doesn't know if he's going to play Mariota Thursday night against the Vikings. Now, Mariota's had a pretty good preseason, 70% completion percentage, showed some leadership and some toughness uh, in, in, in a lot of games this year. I'm of the opinion, Jimmy, that he needs to play, though. He's a rookie quarterback. Why not put him out there for two or three series against the Vikings Thursday night? Hopefully put a couple of good drives together and the preseason on a good note as they get ready for Tampa Bay in the regular season opener. I understand you run the risk of getting him hurt, but this is a rookie quarterback. I think he needs to play. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, and I, I, and I really believe that Ken Wilson certainly doesn't hasn't decided what he's going to do. I think there's certainly two schools of thought there. You, you give him a chance to play a series or two uh, and, and get even more work heading into the regular season. But also the other school of thought is, and, and, and if you look back, you know, some people you know, hear him talking about not playing and when they think this is unheard of, why not play you know, your rookie, go out and play your rookie quarterback. Well, last year in the preseason finale, the Titans didn't play any of their starters. I mean, they sat everybody down. The whole offensive line, you know, your running back, Jake Locker didn't play. You know, the same thing on defense. It's, it's just the NFL has gotten away, at least teams in the NFL have gotten away from playing their starters in that preseason game number four. So, if you play Mariota, you got to play everybody. I mean, you, you can't, you know, play a backup off of the line and put your prize quarterback out there behind them. So, if it's Mariota playing, your whole offense is playing around him. So, no one gets the day off, and you run the risk of not only exposing him to an injury, but maybe some other guys as well in a game where, let's be honest, you know, a lot of these guys are going to be playing for the Vikings. They're going to sit a lot of their starters. You're going to be playing against guys who have nothing to lose uh, coming in here on uh, Thursday night. So, yeah, I can see where you maybe want to get some work in, but is it really going to help his development if he plays, you know, eight snaps or, or throws the ball two or three times? I and mean, I think they feel like they've seen everything they knew to out of him. And, again, I'm not saying that the Titans are not going to play Mariota. I just don't know that it, that would help him in his development just to, just to play, you know, a handful of snaps. Jimmy, I get all that, and I, and I understand where you're coming from, but I just look at the big picture. This is a team that went 2-14 and 14 last year, and you have one more opportunity to try and put something together at home in front of your home fans. You know, you hear all kinds of rumblings, uh, you know, coming out of the Titans about how there's a negative vibe uh, between the fans and the Titans. A lot of people think it's predicated by us in the media, and that's another topic for another time. Why not go out there and, yeah, have all, have all 22 starters out there for a couple of series, try to get something positive going, end the preseason on a good note? Yeah, I, and I, I, and I, get, I, I can see that school of thought, and, if all, you know, I'm, and I'm saying they're not going to do it. I don't, I don't think they play all 22 starters. I mean, if they play the guys on offense, I don't necessarily think it means they do it on defense. But right. uh, I, I'm just, uh, you know, preseason is important for the, especially preseason game number four for a lot of young guys, you know, especially guys who are looking for playing time. And I think it's important for guys who are not going to be on the roster but can get a chance to play. Uh, you know, to, to impress other teams here on the on the verge of cutdowns, 
I just um, I've always been this way when I worked with the, with the Tennessee or worked for the Titans. I've just always have been, uh, you know, haven't put a whole lot of stock in the fourth preseason game. I just don't think you can get a whole bunch out of it, and uh, that's why that, that that's a little bit why I'm, I guess I'm uh, throwing a little cold water on the idea myself. Fair enough. Uh, Bleedy Ray Wilson returned to practice today. Wisenhunt says he hopes to get him some snaps on Thursday. Uh, I think it's important for him to play because you look at where he and Cody Sensabaugh are with uh, Jason McCourty out for the, at least uh, for the short term. Uh, both those guys have to prove that they can be relied on, correct? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's important for him to play. I also think that's a little bit tricky, too, because he's coming off a high ankle sprain. And yet while you want him to play, that's one of those injuries that lingers for a long time. And, uh, you know, do you do yourself some uh, more damage than good by getting him out there for just, a, you know, 20 snaps? You know, if, if you could get an extra – week of rest and let that ankle heal up. I mean, I believe Ray Wilson needs to work. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I mean, he, he missed the good part of this off season while recovering from the shoulder uh, surgery and and you know, they, they're thin at sec in the secondary. They need all the bodies they can get. Uh, they need him back in the equation because, you know, it still remains to be seen whether Jason McCord will be ready for the opener. So, he's a guy who has experience. They really like him. He was really coming on before he suffered this setback earlier this in camp. Uh, it'd be great to get him out there, but he, I mean, he's come back from this high ankle sprain quicker than a lot of guys do. And, I, you know, yes, they want him to play, but, uh, you know, I'd be a little bit, you know, I would also be weighing the other, looking at the other side of the coin there, too. Do you do yourself more harm than good by getting them out there and, and having uh, that injury linger a little bit longer? He's Nashville's own Jimmy Wyatt no longer of the Tennessee and now at titansonline.com you can read his uh, great articles there on that website pretty much each and every day and of course a longtime friend here on Sportsline Jimmy on the other side of the ball David Cobb looked like he uh, was off to a good start this preseason uh, he's officially listed as week to week I believe with a calf injury might be a little bit more serious than that we don't know uh, what do you think his status will this will this injury uh, hurt him in terms of making the team and what does this do from an opportunity standpoint from a guy like say Antonio Andrews well it's not going to hurt his chances of making the team you know Cobb's on the team but it's it definitely going to hurt his chances of making an impact for this team early in the season which is what everyone hoped would be the case I mean Cobb was working through some things as far as uh, you know establishing himself and, and putting himself in good graces uh, with the coaching staff and the people who make decisions there. I mean, he, he still was kind of finding his way. I mean, he flashed in that game down in Atlanta and early in the preseason. And I think everybody, you know, the fan base is ready to turn the job over to him, uh, you know, at that point. Uh, and, and then, uh, and then he, and then he just, uh, you know, he didn't really build on that, you know, moving forward. And I talked to Sylvester Croom last week, his running backs coach, and he said, himself that David Cobb has a lot of you know growing up to do and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of learning to do as far as what it takes to be a pro and commit yourself not only you know on you know game day but during the course of the week and taking care of your body and the very next day is the day that he had the calf injury so unfortunate for David Cobb unfortunate un so unfortunate for the Titans it definitely gives Antonio Andrews a chance to play more and Andrews has gone from being a bubble guy in April and May to being you know on the roster if you ask me I mean he's he's been one of the better backs this offseason for the Titans and he's going to get a chance to play uh, on Thursday night and I think he can get a chance to play during the season uh, because because uh, not only because Cobb is not going to be available to him but because I think he's in a better standing right now. Yeah, and Bishop Sankey seems to have had a fire lit under him as well. He's running extremely hard this preseason as well. The Titans running backs uh, are averaging four yards a carry or better this preseason. And I think a lot of that has to do with that revamped offensive line, Jimmy. We've got uh, 
You know, we got Bell at left guard. Looks like Andy Levitre may be uh, seen his last days in two-tone blue. We don't know. We'll see what happens. And you got the rookie Patazzi at right tackle. You know, I don't know how they're going to hold up in the passing game in terms of protecting Mariota, but the run game sure looks improved with those guys in the lineup. Well, they're sturdier there. I mean, Bell's a bigger guy. He's more of a, of a people mover, I think. And, and uh, you know, so I, I, think, I think they're sturdier there with Bell. You know, Patasi, you know, 21 years old. He just turned 21 just a couple weeks ago. He's a young guy. He's still working on his technique. You know, if all, you know, if, if, you know, in a perfect world, you don't have a rookie protecting a rookie uh, at the start of an NFL season, but that's just kind of where the Titans are right now. They, they do like Jeremiah Patasi, and they feel like he's a talented guy, and I think the more he has played, the better he's gotten. So uh, yeah, you may go through some growing pains with him, but uh, it is a bigger, sturdier-looking line, and uh, certainly at the line, the Titans hope will be better than the one last season. And, and they need to stay healthy, obviously. I mean, like last year's line just got banged up. They just went through so many tackles, had so many guys in and out of the lineup. You know, with a rookie quarterback in there, you, you want to feel good about the group. And, uh, you know, so it, once they start off, they need to make sure that that group stays in there and stays healthy. They'll keep their fingers crossed there. All right, fourth preseason game. Uh, you know what? I'm one of the few people that likes the fourth preseason game because I like to see those guys out there fighting for their football lives. There's going to be a lot of guys out there giving it everything they've got because they know they have to put some good stuff on tape, tape either for this team or perhaps another team. Uh, who are some bubble guys for the Titans, Jimmy? Who, who needs to go out and impress Thursday night? Well, I think they've got... You know, I look at positions, and I think, you know, tight end, I mean, obviously you're looking, you know, you've got three tight ends, and, and, and Walker and Fasano and Stevens. Yeah, I think there's a, I think they probably end up keeping four, and it's a battle between Supernaw and Kaufman there. I think they've certainly got a battle for the interior line spots, you know, you know like a Gaelic and in there along with the, uh, you know, along with some of the, some of the younger guys, Josue Matias, the, the Big offensive lineman that's the undrafted free agent. He's in the mix there. Uh, you know, they've got some decisions to make there. They've got some decisions to make uh, certainly in the secondary. They've got decisions to make a wide receiver. You know, uh, it's kind of Trey McBride flash at the last minute and uh, and earn himself a, a spot. I mean, the, the, the thing that's tricky about these games, you got to keep in mind, is, is they want guys to do well to impress them one last time, but sometimes I'll be completely honest with you, I think teams don't want them to do too well because <laughs> want to sneak through and, and, and release and then try to re-sign them on a practice squad. And if a guy has a great fourth preseason game and you cut him, then the chances of him getting picked up by somebody else and the chances you get to keep him probably, you know, you're, you're hurt in that regard. So uh, I think you're going to see a lot. Yeah, I think the decision's been made. Uh, I asked Ken Wilson on this question today just about how many spots are secure and how many spots are still really open for uh, for competition and how many spots are still up for grabs. And he, he didn't want to go there, and I, and I understood why, because you know certainly you've got to deal with waiver claims uh, after cuts are made, so guys could get bounced that way. You've got Injury situations where you maybe uh, that's maybe fogging things up a little bit, and uh, you know a lot of other things coming into play. But uh, you know, re reality is is that uh, you know this is a big game for you know for for a lot of guys, and it does make it a little bit more exciting. It certainly does. All right, before we get you out of here, Jimmy, I, obviously you're a diehard Vanderbilt fan, season ticket holder. I'm sure you'll be in the house Thursday night. Uh, how does Vandy's defense match up with Western Kentucky's offense, and how do you think the doors are going to do this season under uh, second-year head coach Derek Mason? Well, I hope they do well. I wish I could be in the house on Thursday night. That's right. You're going to be at the game. What am I saying? I you, you know, uh, Brain fart you know, on you my know, part. I'm Sorry. Beast, that's unfortunate. Me. Last year, <laughs> uh, the Titans played a, uh, you know, a Thursday night game. I don't know if you, you probably remember this well. It's a very similar setup last year. The Titans played a Thursday game. I think Vandy it's been played. like that the last two or three years, Jimmy, right? 
Yeah, and last year and I said the only thing that could save me is if somehow there was a storm that could have delayed the bandy game <laughs> where I could do both. And sure enough, you remember what happened. Yep. The bandy game was delayed by a couple of hours, and the Titans played in the rain, and I was able to go to both. I covered the Titans game, and then I made it to Vanderbilt, so I played Temple. And, uh, you know, made it over there for the start of the second quarter. That game didn't end until about 1.30 in right. the morning. So I thought it was one of the luckiest breaks at all time as I was driving over to Vanderbilt Stadium because I could see that game. Well, I didn't think it was so lucky when it was 37-7 to at about <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I'm hoping the result's better this time around for Vandy. I'm optimistic. If you're a Vanderbilt fan, you've got to be optimistic. Right. But, uh, I hope, uh, you know, I hope, they can get off to a good start, find a quarterback they can stick with throughout the year, and I hope it's a hope it's a good year. You know, nobody's expecting much out of Andy, but no one ever expects much out of Andy, to be honest with you. And, and but they've won, you know, they've won some games over there uh, in recent years where nobody expected much of them going in. So I hope it's a year where they can surprise some people. Jimmy, as always, great having you on. And once again, congratulations on your new position over there at TitansOnline.com. I read your stuff all the time. You're doing a great job there. My best to you and your family. And uh, I'll see you somewhere Thursday night. I'm not sure where I'm going to be, but hopefully I'll see you. Okay. Thanks, thanks, JB. Appreciate it. All right, Jimmy Wyatt. Now of TitansOnline.com, friend of the show, great guy. Always great to have him on. All right, we'll take a break. Come back with your phone calls. We're talking Titans. We're talking Doors. We're talking Vols. We're talking SEC. Your phone calls next.